SpaceX is just months away from its 20th anniversary of founding in 2002, and it's headed into a new year in a stronger position than ever. In 2021, the California-based company built its strength in fields ranging from broadband communications to human launches. Today, we are talking about the new Falcon Heavy's launch to orbit. But before that, we welcome you all to our YouTube channel. We post daily updates from the world of space. Now let's take a dive into our orbital journey. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket just got another passenger. The powerful Falcon Heavy is now scheduled to lift Astronus' first commercial communications satellite to orbit next spring. Launching on Falcon Heavy will get us on orbit months faster, allowing us to serve customers in Alaska that much sooner, Astronus CEO John Gedmark said in a statement. This is a huge win for our customers in Alaska. The Alaska Serving Satellite will be just the beginning for Astronus, if all goes according to plan. By owning and operating its satellites and offering them to customers at a turnkey solution, Astronus is able to provide bandwidth as a service and unlock previously unreachable markets. Representatives of the San Francisco-based company wrote in the same statement, This allows Astronus to launch small, dedicated satellites for small and medium-sized countries, Fortune 500 companies, existing satellite operators, and other customers. The 800-pound, 400 kilograms, Astronus satellite will share space on the Falcon Heavy with another communications craft, Vasat 3, which will be operated by fellow California company, Vasat. Falcon Heavy has had just three launches under its belt to date, but it's poised to get quite a workout over the coming months. The rocket is scheduled to launch two classified missions for the U.S. Space Force by early 2020, the first of which will lift off next month. The Vasat 3 Astronus flight will follow shortly thereafter, and Falcon Heavy's manifest also includes NASA's Psyche asteroid mission, which is slated to launch next August. The rocket will also fly some other high-profile missions in the near future, including NASA's ice-hunting Viper Moon rover in 2023 and Europa Clipper probe in 2024. The Falcon Heavy consists of three modified, strapped-together Falcon 9 first stages. The central core is topped by a second stage, which carries the payload. Like the workhorse Falcon 9, the Falcon Heavy is partially reusable. All three first stages are designed to return to Earth, make vertical power landings, and fly again. The Falcon Heavy is a large cargo-lifting rocket developed by private spaceflight company SpaceX. When it launched on its maiden voyage on February 6, 2018, the rocket was the most powerful booster in operation at the time. The Saturn V, which launched the Apollo moon missions, was the most powerful ever. On that debut test flight, the Falcon Heavy met almost all of its major objectives, including, notably, flying company founder and CEO Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster, carrying a mannequin named Starman to space. More flights are planned for later in 2018 as the company begins to seek out more customers for the Falcon Heavy. Eventually, perhaps by 2020, Musk plans to use the experience in developing the Falcon Heavy to make an even bigger rocket, named the Big Falcon Rocket, BFR, for Mars exploration. The steady push by SpaceX into space exploration and eventual Mars landing is rapidly disseminating into popular culture, especially in the form of its fiery CEO and founder Elon Musk who puts musings and predictions on Twitter almost daily. This year alone, Musk began reportedly accepting payments for missions in the cryptocurrency Dogecoin and made a Saturday Night Live guest appearance in which he participated in multiple skits, even playing the Nintendo supervillain Wario. But even on the business side, there's so much activity playing out, it's hard to keep track of it all. Hidden behind some of the company's more high-profile achievements this year, think Starship Landing, Starlink, and human spaceflight launches, is the powerhouse Falcon 9 rocket. Musk wanted to reach 48 launches of the system in 2021. Although SpaceX didn't get nearly that far, the company did set a new record of 31 launches by December's end, with payloads ranging from military satellites to parts of its own mega constellation of Starlink internet satellites. The company also successfully landed a rocket for the 100th time and flew a Falcon 9 for a record 11 times in December to cap off the year. SpaceX almost has a monopoly of launchers, not only human, but also unmanned as well. Pablo de Leon, chair of the University of North Dakota's Space Studies Department, told Space.com. De Leon is also a longtime researcher at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on aspects of human spaceflight, especially spacesuits, a growth area for the university, and long ago on payloads for the space shuttle program. 
He's seen SpaceX's modifications to Pad 39B at KSC in support of its Starship program that will eventually, if Musk plans come to fruition, bring the company to the moon and Mars. DeLeon says he is skeptical about Musk's timeline estimations. Musk is hoping to put a human mission around the moon by 2023 and to land people on Mars within five years. But the latter will depend on Musk's Starship system working properly. Starship hasn't even had an orbital mission yet. That said, DeLeon, an engineer by training, praised Musk's approach to testing, failing, and learning from it. There are many chances that they will find failure in the first flights, DeLeon said of Starship. But as we saw before, SpaceX isn't afraid of failing during testing, because that's the way that you learn. DeLeon also added that as a private company, SpaceX has more room to fail than NASA or any other government agency, although the big question is what will happen if a human spaceflight system fails, and SpaceX must wait several years for an investigation to complete, as NASA's space shuttle program experienced twice. SpaceX is already making moves for 2022, including flying the first Axiom space mission, Axe 1, to the International Space Station and continuing work on its human landing system contract in support of the Artemis Human Moon Landing Program. The HLS contract was delayed several months due to a series of protests and legal challenges associated with SpaceX receiving a sole supplier award from NASA, but is now ongoing after competitor Blue Origin lost its protest November 4th. The first Artemis landing, however, was pushed back to 2025 from 2024, in part due to the HLS situation. But Axiom will likely take a lot of attention next year as it will be the first all-private mission to the space station. Among the four crew members is Canadian investor and philanthropist Mark Pathy, who is working with a coalition of universities across the country to create a package of science experiments to fly with him. One of the researchers in that group is Adam Sirik, who specializes in family medicine and aerospace medicine. He co-founded space healthcare company Leap Biosystems and teaches at Western University in Central Canada. SpaceX has the agility of the newcomer in the industry, even though they're not really a newcomer anymore, Sirik told Space.com, saying the company appears more nimble than competitors Boeing and United Launch Alliance. They have the agility and the ability to pivot and to adapt to customers' needs that the larger legacy organizations don't demonstrate. Sirik said this is most evident with the Crew Dragon vehicle, which was developed with funding from NASA for NASA missions, but is also available for companies like Axiom Space to hire out as needed. Indeed, just days ago, NASA greenlighted Axiom for a second space flight to the ISS on a Crew Dragon. This is really exciting. Let's see what happens next. With this, we wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon with more updates.